Perfect. Okay, Hello. it's recording. Hello, everyone. I'm Leanne Payne. I'm the executive director of Wild Bird Trust. I'm um, grateful to be on the lands of the Squamish, the Tsleil-Waututh, and the Musqueam peoples. Um, at Wild Bird Trust, many of you will know that we're trying to do a better um, way of relating, of um, acknowledging where we are and and in very real terms um, uh, shifting our relationship to the land to Tsleil-Waututh and Squamish in particular who've stored these lands since time out of mind um, and shifting that in ways that we're working, living and um, uh, managing the site that we're, we're very blessed to um, be part of taking care of with others. So um, today we're going to be hearing from Rob Alexander. Some of you will be familiar with Rob, have seen him, have seen many of his photos that show up on our Facebook. Um, and he is a prolific birder and photographer for our benefit. Um, and if you've encountered him on site, um, particularly pre-COVID, he's always ready to share and talk about what he's recently um, captured in his camera to, to share with you. And we're so we're going to have a bit more about that. He's been a birder for about 40 years, which is longer than he's been a photographer. And uh, so he must, must have been at least three then. Well, um, actually, and, I, I've been a photographer since 1975, but um, I, I haven't done bird photography since 2006. Yeah, wow. Nice. And you'll also know that he's often... Oh, I think Leanne just cut out a little bit there. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> But that's okay. Leanne, you just cut out the last little bit there. Okay. okay. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll just, um, are we ready to hand it over to Rob now? Yeah, well, I'm going to be playing a short little video, you guys. Um, so I'm just going to be sharing my screen. And we have two short videos, just one on the flats, and then one on Rob that I did uh, a few days ago. So, or yesterday, it <laughs> feels like a few days ago. Okay, perfect. And just let everyone let me know if, um, you guys can hear everything, okay? Mm -hmm. Is the volume okay? A little bit more. Okay. Oh, is it good? Yes. It needs more hope. volume. Perfect. And then I'm just going to share one. Was the volume okay on that or should I? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It's okay. We'll just. Okay, I'll try. I'm um, sharing my screen again. I'm going to share the one on Rob. So, oh, yeah. you couldn't hear anything. That's so... No, we couldn't. Oh, okay. Let me try um, one more time with this video with Rob. Give me a sec. Sorry about that, guys. Sometimes Zoom just doesn't like, okay, let's see. Oh, share sound. You gotta press share sound. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, we can watch that video at the end if anyone's interested. It's also on our YouTube uh, page. Okay, I'm going to 
And let me, everyone know, let, ugh, sorry, everyone let me know um, if you guys can hear this, okay? Fun. Hi, Rob. Can everyone hear that? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this is just a little five minute video that Rob and I recorded um, uh, yesterday at the Flats. Um, and it's just a little bit about Maplewood Flats and how Rob got started. So I'm gonna be sharing that now. Nice to see you today. Hi, Nicole, how are you? Good. So we just have a few questions here um, and we're wondering if you'd like to answer them. Sure, that'd be great. Sweet, so like I said, your name's Rob, but do you want to introduce yourself? My name's Rob Alexander, I'm a North Bank guy, born and raised, and uh, I, I just love Maplewood Flats. Awesome, and how long have you been coming to the flats for? Well, I first started coming here back in uh, 2003. Uh, and this is because I got a digital SLR. Wow. And uh, it really was uh, um, a wonderful place to visit for the first time. Also, my uncle was here in 1934. Wow. Here's a painting of his, an oil painting he did. That's amazing, and that's right there. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. How uh, you cool. You can see <laughs> Capitol Hill and, you know, everything. That's amazing. So uh, our family has been coming up for a very long time, you know. Oh, and, that's awesome. But I, I came here, um, um, at first I didn't know about birds that much, but uh, I w wanted to try my camera out and... And I noticed that I really had a knack for photographing the birds. Wow. So then I started learning about their names and everything. And now I know all the birds. More than that. <laughs> oh, yes. And everything about them. That's awesome. And how long have you been a member of the Wild Bird Trust for? Well, um, I originally with Pat Patricia Batney Lover, she was the, uh, the first uh, president of Wild Bird um, uh, Walbert Trust. Uh, I first uh, became a member in 2006, two years after I first started. Nice. Now I started getting involved with uh, Maple Flats and I uh, always go on the Elgrass Bird Walks. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And what is your favorite bird to find here? Well, um, I love the, the, you're here in the background, a little black cap chickadee. Yes, There's you might not be able here. to see him, but. <laughs> but um, my favorite is the spotted toy, just because uh, I've learned how to speak to them, and, uh, and they always respond to me, and uh, sometimes you get up to eight of them all coming around me while we're having a conversation. Wow, yeah. that is so cool. And what is the coolest? bird you've seen here or the most interesting well one winter we had a northern pigman owl it was a really tiny owl that came down with it when it, it got too cold because you can't hunt when it when the snow gets too deep or too icy so they come down to lower elevations and they can feed here so it was really cool photographing them oh wow want to see a photo of them yeah let's see if i can dig them out there sounds good While you're finding it, I'm going to do a little pan. Oh, yeah. So we're filming on location here. There he is. Ooh, oh, he's so cute. I know. Uh -huh. Oh, my God, what a funny little guy. I love it. Oh, I know, I know. That's awesome. It was really awesome to see him, you know. So exactly. Cool, yeah. And what piece of advice would you give to either new birders or people that want to start coming here to enjoy nature? Well, I suggest first visit a, uh, a nature place. Uh, there's many around uh, Greater Vancouver, and Maplewood Flats is one of the best places to visit. I'd also uh, recommend that you get a little pair of binoculars just to have a better look at birds and, anim and animals and, and plants and stuff. And I recommend this pair called the Papio 2. Uh, it's a macro binocular, so it allows you to look closer at flowers and insects and even birds too but uh, if you really want to get into birding i suggest go down to wild birds unlimited in north vancouver or wherever and, and ask them about their binoculars there uh, they have a, a lifetime guarantee on vortex uh, binocular so that's awesome really awesome uh, beautiful and what camera do you have right there well, i'm using uh, a Canon 70 Mark II is a top of the line for wildlife. Wow. And this is the 
EF 7300, which is an L lens, which is mean that the top is sharpest lens you can get. Plus, it's uh, one of the later ones and uh, Oh, then you called that one of your smaller ones, didn't you? Yeah, I got lucky. I want to recognize the birds. I want to learn where this place is. I'd like to go out to a bird sanctuary. Hi, sorry. I know. No. Oh, hi, sorry. I can just, um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. Yeah, right now we're locked in so much. Mm. So I'd feel it would be a safe place to go. Okay. I think we'll end the video there. Um, Rob, are you ready? He can't hear now. His oh. audio is off. Is yeah, just there? about. Um... Sorry. Hi. Is everyone, uh, is everyone good? Yeah. Rob, are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah, okay, I'm perfect. Fine. Robin, do you this. move your mask down? Take your fucking yeah, mask. I'm going to, yes, uh, yes. Uh, I guess down the chin is good. Okay, no, take it off. Okay, so, uh, all right, so I'm just gonna ask. Someone unmuted or is that in the background where Rob is? Oh, uh, it's Al Grass talking in the background. Is it too much of a... Uh, it's a bit noisy. Are they outside of the nature house? Well, I'm upstairs with Elsie. Yeah, but are they inside the nature house? Yeah, yes, they're uh, doing okay. the um, okay. meet and greet. All right, just go ahead. Okay, okay. let's do it. And remember, okay, Rob I'm going to go, go over and talk to Al and mention that we're doing the recording, okay? One moment. Okay. <laughs> I'll go to the second. Oh, Hi. Hey, Al, uh, we're going to be recording. Okay, Al? Al, we're going to do the recording right now, so if you can be a little quiet, that'll be great. Okay, so what we have here is the black capped chickadee. Uh, there's many around the uh, wild bird, uh, uh, Maplewood Flats, and uh, recently, People have been hand feeding them and they've been coming to your hand for, for seeds. So that's a new development in the life of the black capped chickadee here. Um, the, 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 the song that you hear um, uh, sounds like, hey, sweetie, or cheeseburger is actually the mating call of the male black capped chickadee looking for a gal. So, uh, yeah, black capped chickadees are wonderful. They're, they're, they have a hierarchy in their family where the eldest is uh, the, the in charge and the most youngest get, is last to be fed once you leave the nest. So, um, Rob, just let me know when you want me to change slides, okay? Just let me okay, know. Okay, so we can change, yep. Perfect. Okay, wood duck. Wow, we've been really lucky to have the wood duck, especially in this photo you see here in what's called the dragonfly pond, which is our smallest pond at Maplewood Flats. But they've been so accessible. You can get, they've been walking right up to your feet. So I don't know where they came from, but they've been really friendly. So wood ducks, as you can see, are the most beautiful duck there is uh, that we have. And um, yeah, we're really happy that we have them here because uh, for the longest time we didn't have any uh, wood ducks. Uh, we, we have wood duck nest boxes which are put up in trees because they are tree nesters, um, not uh, ground nesting birds, but in trees. So we have these big nest boxes with a hole in them and, uh, and we, they've been using that. Uh, uh, but um, very friendly duck and uh, very colorful, uh, beautiful. But next. Nice. Uh, we're really lucky to have the Western Tiger Swallowtail. Uh, uh, it's, it's such a beautiful butterfly. And uh, you, as, as you can see, it's very colorful. Um, and uh, the, the, the caterpillars feed on willow as their main plant. But here it's feeding on mock orange because it's a nectivore. The, 
the caterpillar. Um, it's actually, you notice how brightly striped and colored it is. In nature, that's a warning sign that I'm poisonous. So uh, it, it helps keep uh, birds and other animals from eating it. Uh, otherwise, they'd, they'd be very indigestible. <laughs> But it sure is wonderful in the, in the summer to see Western tiger swallowtails flying around. Next. What's the best time to see them, uh, Rob? Uh, be late spring and summer, really good time. And, um, and they stick around right into uh, autumn. Nice. Perfect. Yeah. Now this is what, uh, what's called the spotter toy I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, the ones that I call to and they respond. So El Grass uh, has always mentioned that uh, Tori Peterson has always called the sparrow a well-dressed sparrow, uh, just because of, of the, uh, to many people, a spotter toy doesn't look like a sparrow, but, uh, uh, they're a very beautiful bird. Uh, you'll find the bird mostly on the ground, scratching, uh, jump, scratch, uh, looking for food under leaves. And uh, they're, they're super friendly. Uh, I always call out to them and they always respond back, uh, except during breeding season, because then they're really busy trying to find a girl. But <laughs> during the rest of the year, um, yes, um, I can have up to eight different spotted toys calling to me while I'm doing my call imitation. So I have a special soft spot for them, yes. Nice. Um, yeah. And we should mention that all these photos are taken at Maplewood Flats. So oh, yes, all of these... every single one. Yeah. It's uh, the a red well... eye, uh, you can tell if it's male or female. If it's a dull red eye, it's a female. If it's a bright red eye, it's a male. So. Um, Carlene on is on, Carlene Thomas is on the Facebook live and she's asking you to make a call like the call of the toe. Oh, the oh okay. Um, I, my little imitation is uh, just kind of. Oh, do that again. And, and that brings them in like crazy, you know, because <laughs> it does kind of imitate them, uh, you know, like for an example. Uh, um, I'll just play a little spotted toy call. You can uh, just wait for me, but. Uh, yeah, uh, while you're finding that Rob, um, I'll just let everyone know. So, so Rob has been taking photos at the flats, like the video said, for a very long time. I think you said 2003 or something like that. Um, and yes. so I'll, he has a lot of photos um, and we just wanted to showcase different parts. So as we go, oh, there he goes. That was her song. Do you want to play it one more time, Rob? Yeah. Um, here it is. No, oh, that's not it, but. Uh, <laughs> that's her mating song. Wow. You're up in the tree calling the male. Amazing. Hmm, they don't seem to have it. Anyways, um, my call <laughs> does imitate them wonderfully. <laughs> nice. So nice. I guess next, yeah. Perfect. So Maplewood Flats is really lucky to have river otters uh, here in Maplewood Flats. So uh, they're really uh, quite a character a mammal. Um, they're very family orientated. And one of their favorite foods is Dungeness crab, which I think on the market is priced out of this world right now due to the Chinese market. But uh, yeah, this guy is swimming in the barge channel when you cross a bridge. So, so they're, they're really gregarious. It's funny watching them. They're always rolling around in the ground and, uh, and swimming and doing somersaults underwater. It's quite, quite a wonderful thing to watch. Uh, wow. I have other videos of them with family and babies riding on the back and stuff. And, and well, we they don't can be quite voracious. You should see them, how they eat crab. They just, they eat everything, um, all the shell and, and everything. And later what they do is they expel what's called a spelt. And it's really smelly. It's um, all the bones and shells that they couldn't digest. 
ends up in a big pile. <laughs> so you'll find that at Maplewood Flats in certain places, the spelt, which, um, which is, um, you know, the, where the river otters have been. So these guys no, are really cute. My Amazing swim. What, what, Nicole? Oh, sorry. I was going to say, my grandpa used to work at the uh, Bayshore by Stanley oh, Park. Oh, yeah, Bayshore, right? The uh, uh, river otters used to always break in and go swimming in the swimming pool there. No so, way. No yeah, way. I thought that was funny. <laughs> yeah. That was your grandfather. Uh, he was a barber, right? Yeah, he was the barber in yeah, the Bayshore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Here's the next photo. Yeah, here's the river otter chowing down on some uh, uh, Dungeness crab again, and they can be really voracious, you know? Look at those, uh, he just get, he gets in there, grabs a big mouthful and just rips, you know? So yeah, wow. he's having a good time. A hearty meal, as you say. A beautiful animal, eh? Yeah. Gorgeous. Uh, that's the crab water. in his... Yeah, that's a Dungeness crab in his paws there. Very cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was really lucky to see him uh, feeding. Um, he didn't care I was there photographing him. Uh, he was just hungry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Next photo. Yes, please. Now, remember the during the summer, we had this moth outbreak everywhere. Um, well, this is the 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 hemlock looper moth and this is a male uh, it was on my window uh, and so I photographed it looking in which is kind of interesting because you don't see that view very often by the way I digitally uh, clean my window uh, otherwise there'd be lots of spots on it but you can see the feathered antenna uh, this uh, shows that it's a male and uh, and it picks up the pheromones of the female uh, to, to find a female and mate. Um, you'll notice a little orange proboscis, which they use to nectar and uh, it's quite cute. And the little leg uh, juts are used to hang on to, um, to uh, trees like the hemlock and cedar that they feed on. What happened was this spring and, and, and last year was really wet, so uh, because we had drought for a few years, the, because it was wet, the the hemlock and cedar and other uh, evergreens started sprouting a lot of green growth. And these guys, the caterpillars, started feeding on them uh, quite a bit. And there's a population explosion. Um, and that's why we had so, such an outbreak for two years. So we'll see if we have a drought this spring. Um, it may curtail them or... We have another wet spring. Uh, we may have more of them coming up. Nice. Next photo? Yeah. yeah, sure. Now, this is a phantom hemlock liver moth. It was the lesser of the outbreak, but they're, it's such a beautiful moth, though. Um, um, it was um, also around. Uh, it seemed to come later uh, after the uh, after the the other moth, but... Uh, not just populous, but pl plentiful everywhere you can find them. So very beautiful. And um, and also its caterpillars were feeding on the hemlock and cedar and other evergreens. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. And of course, they're laying their eggs everywhere on evergreen. So um, up at Cap Cleveland Dam, you'd look over to the west side and the forest looked kind of reddish. And that was because of the feeding damage that they had done to the trees. So uh, it'll recover, but uh, yeah, it was quite voracious. <laughs> wow. Next yeah. photo. Sure. Here's an osprey, uh, which we have here at Maplewood Flats. Uh, managed to get a good, cool shot of it landing for trying to catch a fish. But um, such a beautiful bird. Look at that. The talons are out, uh, ready to snatch up a bird. <laughs> but we have a breeding uh, osprey here at Maplewood Flats, and um, the males go flying into the forest to knock dead branches off. And you hear this mighty crack uh, when you're walking the, the trails, and it's gathering branches for its nest. 
So you can hear this massive crack. It's just amazing. Um, so um, they always have two young in the nest, uh, usually. And uh, it's very cool seeing them uh, grow up. Um, their flight, too, is just amazing. Um, and they feed strictly on fish. They don't feed on anything else. So the beautiful osprey. In the video that I unfortunately messed the audio up on, sorry about that, everyone. Oh, yeah, um, that was beautiful, yeah. It, they, it says they nest in, like, uh, kind of on the ocean, right? And on the yes. like, like, pillars. And lakes. And lakes as well. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, do you want me to go to the next photo, Rob? Yeah, sure. Next. This Oregon grape, uh, which is a native species, um, and a very valuable uh, food source for birds and uh, also in the winter time because uh, this, when the fruit dries up, they got the seeds that the sparrows can feed on. And First Nation used Oregon grape too as a, as a food source. And uh, especially in, in the fall when you get that coloration of the red, it's just gorgeous. So uh, this, is, this is a plant you can I, find all over the flats too. And you can eat this, but it may be a little sour to most people. You got to wait until it's uh, ripe enough, you know. But but it's found all over the, ma the maple flats. Yeah, there's some That's even against that. where the feeder area is. Exactly, so and they, they are very tart. So definitely oh yeah, very cool. tart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was it used in pemmican? Uh, yes, I, I I don't know if we had so much pemmican over here, but dried berries. Yeah, yeah, not really, so much here. Yeah, yeah, yep. dried berries are definitely used all throughout the season. <clears throat> here we got a mink, and they're a really cool animal. Most people think they're like farmed and stuff, but this guy's native. You know, he's uh, so he you see him at the Maplewood Flats, and he, he's a he's a underwater swimming mammal. They spend 90% of the time in the water. It's amazing. So uh, it's, it's really amazing just walking you by the ocean and suddenly this little furry head pops up. <laughs> but uh, they're also really quite voracious. You got fangs, really tiny, sharp little fangs. So uh, they catch, catch something, they'll be ferocious eating it. But I was really happy getting this photo of them down by the um, down by uh, the second point, I guess, along the trail, uh, I walked down and suddenly there I was. And we stayed, guy, we uh, stared eye to eye, and, uh, and then I got my shot. So, anyways, um, pretty nice. cool animal. I, I like mink. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Now, this is what's called the cross uh, orb weaver spider. It's actually from uh, England originally. But it's been here forever. So this is a big uh, orb weaver spider that you see, um, you know, in the fall, the big ones. Um, so this is a female, of course, and uh, she's full of eggs. That's why she's getting so big. But um, yeah, they're quite amazing, and uh, it's they they make a little egg sac covered with um, with spider silk and. And in the early spring, suddenly they hatch, and you have all these tiny little yellow spiderlings flying, uh, walking all around. And suddenly they take off with little mini parachutes that catch the wind and take them off to other directions to start their own life as a spider. But uh, I, I think these guys are beautiful. Here in Maplewood Flats, you don't see them very often, but we do have coyote. And uh, I saw this one near the West Pond. Uh, another thing I noticed is she is pregnant. Oh. So, so I, I was very calm with her and as you can see, she's really relaxed here. So we had uh, a nice uh, session there, me photographing her and me blinking at her. Uh, that's one thing to do with mammals, they slowly blink. Uh, it shows a, a measure of love and trust. Uh, it, it works with birds too, uh, slowly blinking and, and being as calm as you can. Uh, but uh, yes, it, it's a beautiful, uh, 
beautiful coyote and we're on El Grasso's bird walk and uh, and uh, everyone got a good look at it. And then someone said, oh, I naturally do it with dogs and cats. Good to know, you know, it works with all animals and birds. Yeah, so. Uh, Very cool. Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, it was really beautiful to see. So you can tell that she had an, uh, uh, a nest here at Maple Flat. She was, she had probably pups shortly after this photo was taken or maybe she already had pups. But anyways, wonderful to see. This is a, a, a beetle that you'll see quite regularly at Maplewood Flats on the flowers. It's a, it's a, um, it's called the common red soldier beetle. And it loves eating pollen from plant, from flowers. So here it is feeding on yarrow and um, looks like he's having a really good time, but um, it's, it's really quite a beautiful beetle. So uh, my big telephoto zoom lens also acts as a macro uh, lens. I can zoom in quite close with it. So uh, so instead of getting a separate cam a macro lens, I can just just pull in my my telephoto lens and use it as a macro lens. Works well. More depth of field that way. Nice. And yarrow is an amazing plant that's also found all over the flats. Most oh, yes. Yeah. Medicinal as well, you know? Yeah, definitely medicinal. It's a great plant. If you know how to deal with it, yeah. Yeah, and it's amazing because most of yarrow, from, from the roots to the flowers to the leaves, are um, all medicinal and oh, wow. um, yeah. definitely always look and look into things before you go harvest, but it's definitely a good plant to start with because it's easy to identify and um, yeah, but it's a very, very beautiful plant. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, Myrna is saying that, Myrna Lee Johnson is saying, looks like the coyote has already had pucks with their teeth showing through. Oh yeah, good point. Uh, the yarrow though, um, it comes in many different colors. There's pink yellow and there's orange, orange and the yellow and yeah, it's just amazing. Beautiful. So here's the black-tailed deer taking the baby, the fawns down to the beach. Uh, <laughs> not something you see very often, but it did happen. So babies just loved it, you know. And they, a new an element to explore and you know and. They were even nibbling on the uh, on the seaweed there, you know. Aww. So uh, it's quite cool. Um, I think they like that because it's salt in their diet, which they don't get very much from the plants. So and so it was fun seeing them down on the beach. Very cool. And and that's the just, what's that, Nicole? Oh, sorry. I just said taking the kids to the beach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was really fun. Really fun, and uh, you can see they still have their spots, so quite young, and yeah, yeah, so very cute. Very cute. Yeah. Black, uh, here's a beautiful bald eagle um, taken at the flats here. Uh, yeah, I got pretty close to this baby here, and uh, it's really beautiful. And uh, this one is actually a male. Um, I learned uh, something from a well-known birder that if you see the white is kind of st straight along the neck, it's usually a male. But you see one with a white jagged neck, that's usually a female. And the females are much larger than the male. So oh. this guy's a little smaller than usual, but uh, great to get a good shot. So bald eagles are just amazing predators, you know. Uh, they, their talons are so powerful. Uh, they can dive, they, you know, and they're huge scavengers. So they take from other birds and, and, and they're, they'll feed on carcasses. And, and their favorite place, if they can't get food, is a dump. <laughs> so, but um, if you and go down to Boundary Bay at 72nd right now, you'll find hundreds, literally hundreds of bald eagles. I went down there once and I counted 300 bald eagles in, in just one one street, you know. Where was that again, Rob? 
down 72nd Street in Boundary Bay. Okay, very cool. In, yeah, check it out, I, check it out. Very cool. And I think they're mating right now, aren't they? Yes, yes. Uh, they're rebuilding their nests uh, right now and, uh, and, uh, and they're doing their breeding, yes. Uh, so, um, yes, uh, uh, it's not on here, but I want to bring up the Anna's hummingbird are, breed, are nesting right now. So that's pretty cool. Very cool. We don't think of them as so early, but they're the early, earliest bird to nest next to the great horned owl. Wow. Yeah, I know. Cool. Eh? Now, talking about owls, here's a northern pygmy owl, which, uh, which we had at Maplewood Flats. And uh, this little guy um, showed up when it got really icy and cold uh, due to uh, heavy snowfall up the mountain. And, and we had snow down here. And, uh, and um, yes, and, and so they come down to lower elevations uh, due to uh, not being able to get through the frosty snow. So they come down to lower elevation to feed. And he was catching bulls like crazy. I couldn't believe it when we saw him. But uh, but um, this guy was, uh, yeah, pretty amazing little bird. Size, size, size of a pot can, you know, but just oh. absolutely ferocious, you know. It'll catch prey bigger than itself. I'm going to just mention, mention something about um, so it, yeah. um, I just love how he looks, his eyes, you know, and oh, yeah, well, they're like, um, it's just like, uh, they're just so fierce, you know. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, do you want me to go to the next photo? Yeah, sure. And here's our great horned owl, and he is uh, right now breathing um, and uh, and sitting on eggs right now. And um, and we get them quite regularly here in, at Maplewood Flats uh, all year round. Uh, this one was near the dragonfly pond. <coughs> but... Uh, Really beautiful, eh? Look at that feather and everything. Wow. Love it. Anyway, it's their uh, first predators and uh, and uh, in the snow, you can see their feathers um, um, when they're going after prey. You can, you can see the markings, it's quite amazing. So here they feed on rodents and, uh, and uh, they'll even feed after some birds, uh, sometimes small ducks, you know, amazing though. Uh, and their talons are massive. Wow. So, uh, and their eyesight is amazing. They have tubular eyes, so they can see a very far distance, but wow. they, they, they have to move, they can't move their eyes around like us. They have to move their head to see. That's, so their head can turn like, a far more degree than we can, you know, nearly uh, 360, but they can turn, but um, pretty amazing bird. I just saw some owl pellets at the flats. I think it was oh, last Oh, yeah. Week. Yeah, it was lots of fur and lots of bones. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen skulls and, and owls. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. Yeah, they're, they're quite amazing. Uh, yes. do you want to next photo. So there's sure. one question about what time of year that photo was taken. Oh, this owl? Well, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, as you can see that with the cedar changing color, it was uh, late fall. Um, because the cedar, yeah, that's the season. So it was a cold, cold day and the um, cedar was changing late fall. And that's when he was in the, in the tree beside the dragon uh, fly pond. Yeah. Nice. But you'll see them um, mostly in winter, yeah. Yeah. Here's a little dark-haired Junko. Uh, um, he was really enjoying that sun. Look how puffed up he is. And and he wasn't budging at all. Uh, I, I, I walked right up to him, and he didn't want to budge at all. So, uh, but, uh, yeah, they had just come back from, this, from the mountain because... Uh, 
we miss them in the summer because they do head up the mountain to breed and stuff. Just our local mountain. But, uh, yeah, it was very beautiful sitting there. So, yes. so Dr. Junko, a uh, problem with eaters right now, uh, the salmonella. Uh, Dr. Junkos are just as susceptible as uh, pine siskin. <laughs> the problem with pines, uh, dark eyed junco is the ground feeder. So they like to feed on the seed that's fallen to the ground. Well, also that's where the feces is as well, the bird uh, droppings. So uh, that means for, the, for these guys to survive, you have to clean up the bottom under the feeder as well. This way uh, you'll keep this guy safe. Nice. Uh, yeah. American Dipper, we have an American Dipper regularly over in McCartney Creek, which is at the far eastern uh, edge of Maplewood Flats. So um, these guys are wonderful singers. Um, and they just go on and on and on. Want to hear a little song? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Where was this taken at the flats, Rob? Yeah, at McCartney Creek. Okay, thank you. Very cool. I love the reflection of the water. Can you hear that? Yeah. Good. This is a, 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 a songbird that can swim underwater. Wow. And it gets all this food from swimming underwater, from underwater insects to salmonates, uh, even to small salmon smolts. Okay. He's got the oiliest, oiliest feathers of any other bird in North America. And that's due to a gland right near his neck that he can makes it all his feathers completely waterproof. How cool. Yeah, yeah. Nice. If you don't want to see a dipper swimming, uh, one good place is right by the fish hatchery at Capilano River, when the river is lower. Uh, right now, if it's warm, uh, a good place to see them is a new lake uh, up at Severus Provincial Park. Um, when it's warmer, they'll be swimming around when the when the river is bu really busy and fast. We saw a uh, American Dipper over at McKay Creek since they've uh, um, they've uh, diverted the the creek into a dike system and they open up a different passage for the water and it's lesser turbulence. And there's a dipper there for several months, which is really amazing. Very cool. So they're such a beautiful bird. And as he said, they sing beautifully. And, um, and also they like to dip. They, they, they dip. They dip, you know, always, constantly. They're kind of dip. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. This is our last I bird. Know. But I was wondering yeah. if you wanted to share. I think the video got cut off a little bit at the end. Do you want to share oh, one yeah. of your favorite spots um, to go sure. at Maplewood um, Flats? Sure, sure, let's do it. Awesome. There we go, I can see everyone now. <laughs> so yeah, Rob, where is your favorite spot at the flats? And what is your favorite bird to see at the flats? Oh, wow, that's uh, pretty difficult there. Well, <laughs> I love all, spot, all, all areas of the Maple Flats. Um, I guess my favorite is the West Pond uh, from the West viewpoint. Uh, it, it, all throughout the year, you can see amazing species, and um, you get the the warblers in the spring migration, and and you get lots of waterfowl and ducks and grebes uh, all throughout the other year, and this a wonderful place. My favorite bird. That's really difficult. Uh, well, um, I guess um, we have one little warbler that I like called the black-throated gray warbler. Uh, a lot of people don't see it, you know, very often. But um, 
the males have a, a beautiful black throat and uh, I mean, just double, double check here. <laughs> I'm going to just heard, find a photo of it, okay? No worries. I'll share a really cool fact. So yesterday, Rob and I went on a social distance walk, and that's where that video came from. Um, and I learned a lot about Rob. He has quite the experience. Um, and what was really cool is he shared in the video that his grandfather actually had come to the flats in, 19, in the 1930s um, to paint. And what is now Capitol Hill is in this beautiful painting. Oh, so yeah. here, this this is a female uh, black throated gray warbler. Let me. Uh, yeah, hold it a little closer. Oh wow! So it's a pretty uh, bird with a yellow dot right at his, his beak. So quite a cool, uh, quite a cool bird. And uh, also, I wanted to mention that um, my uncle. Um, painted Maplewood Flats. Oh, uncle, so sorry. <laughs> back in 19, uh, let me straighten it up, 1934, uh, 37. Can everyone see that? I think roughly, yeah, definitely. And that's that's Capitol Hill yeah. in that painting. Yeah, yes, yes. And uh, also he painted the Sever Shacks back in the 30s, which I'll show. And Rob has a website link that I'll include with all the photos um, that we shared here today, just so you guys can actually look at them in, in detail and close up too. Yeah. So here's the settler shot. I think you have to come a little closer, Rob, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so just trying to keep it straight there. It's kind of weird on my side, because uh, <laughs> do you see that? Now, that's a beehive burner that was uh, at Mayport Flat, uh, at Dalton Highway for the longest time. And it's out just um, um, about five um, houses east from here. Where who's the guy that helps uh, with the purple martin um, nest boxes, Leanne? Um, Mike Mont. Mike, Mike at Mike Mike's Mont. place. At Mike's place. When you look out at at the ocean in front of him, you see this big ring, and that's where the beehive burner used to be. Wow. And, and here you can see the settler shots with uh, their smoke pipe and their laundry being done. <laughs> Very cool. Would it yeah, help so, if you move to change it to speaker view, Nicole? Yeah, maybe I can try to do that. Um, um, so I also originally came to the Maplewood Flats back in the 70s to hang out with the hippies uh, or <laughs> They were staying at the cellar shacks to party, you know. So <laughs> it was before my birding time, but. Uh, oh, very uh, cool. Yeah. I was a very young lad then. Someone asked, what is your uncle's name? The one that came to the. Uh, my uncle's name is uh, Robert um, G. Alexander, but he, he went by Rab Alexander. And he was Rab. a well known North Vancouver uh, artist with his wife, Irene Alexander and daughter Re Renee Alexander. Nice. And, and eldest daughter, Mary Alexander. So awesome. uh, a very artistic family. Oh, very cool. Um, Rob, we have about 10 minutes left. So why don't we answer some questions? Um, if anyone has any questions, you can definitely just unmute yourself. If you're not sure how to do that, it's the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. If you take your mouse, or your trackpad on your laptop and you just wiggle it, all the options will come up and you're gonna see a small microphone and um, and, uh, and you can just press unmute. Um, so you can unmute yourself and ask questions. Um, Heidi said, miss the name, please share here. I'll share the name um, in the email I send later. Okay guys? Um, okay, Carleen Thomas is asking um, if you knew uh, her uncle Leonard George. Yes, I, I met Leonard George met many times, and uh, of course, um, um, yes, growing up, and even Chief Dan George, I got to meet as well, and uh, and uh, amazing people, just fascinating um, their knowledge, and uh, and I really respected growing up in North Vancouver, uh, 
their way of life needed to be restored back to uh, the way it was because uh, uh, us uh, white guys did a horrible thing to First Nation. So um, yes, and Leonard George is a wonderful guy. Of course, I, I also saw him when he was young in the 70s doing the video, the Mudflat uh, video called Mudflat Living. So you got a cameo of him talking. That's really cool. We'll link to that video too in the email. School, my high school and did a talk, which uh, all of us were just totally amazed at him. You know, Also by then he was a movie star. So uh, no one in North Van knew a movie star except for Chief Dan George, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, Sheila Harris joining us from Sheffield, UK. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Hi, Sheila. Uh, or, yeah, Sheila, thank you. Uh, where she says, um, so she's coming from the UK where we have lots of dippers on the nearby rivers in uh, Derbyshire. Uh, our dippers have white chests, so they're very easy to spot. It has been wonderful wonderful to see your beautiful moths birds and other wildlife oh thank you so much sheila that's so sweet hey sheila wonderful um our dippers here have white eyebrows so when they close their eyes they're white wow. so that's kind of cool um margaret on facebook would like to know what camera and lens you use? And yes, it was in the video, which I can link for everyone. I think I cut it a little bit early by accident. What was that camera right, that right. you're using? Well, I'm using my main camera for photography is the Canon EOS uh, 7D Mark II. It's the perfect wildlife uh, digital SLR. Uh, very fast, uh, it's got tons of features, which is perfect for wildlife. And my lens is a Canon EF. 70 to 300 L lens, which uh, is very, very sharp. And, and it does a fantastic job photographing little birds. So, so by the way, here's uh, the, uh, the American Dipper that Sheila was mentioning. Their, their little Dipper has a white chest. Oh, wow. Yeah, Cute. Yeah, cool. I love cool, that. Eh? Cool. Yeah, yeah. Someone so asked. Cool. Thanks, Sheila. Thank you, Sheila. Um, someone asked what what pond you were talking about at the flats in case I want to go. Was well, maybe may put flats has, flats has um, let me just do a quick look. Uh, maybe put flats has three ponds, the big west pond. And then if you go across the service road, you get to what's called the east pond. And then um, across there, um, but just up going north is a small dragonfly pond. Very cool. Um, so I'm going to see if I have a map here. <laughs> um, while Rob is looking, does anyone have any questions? You can, again, unmute yourself or write it in the chat. Um, someone says link not working. Don't worry, I can definitely uh, link. Yeah, no map, no map. No worries. But anyways, that's where it is generally. Nice. Yeah. And it's also, uh, I, I was surprised to find a California Darner dragonfly there um, at the dragonfly pond, which you can't, I've never seen a California Darner ever on, on the North Shore. So I found that quite fascinating. That it would be at the dragonfly pond. Very cool. Uh, what name of the binoculars were you using in the video that we filmed? Oh, okay. Um, this is um, a wonderful binocular that does macro uh, viewing instead of far viewing. It's called the Pentax Papio 2, and it's through Ryko. Uh, so instead of zo zooming far away to look at a bird, it allows you to zoom in to look at butterflies and flowers and anything that you need to close focus. It also does a good job of looking far away is about the same um, distance looking as my 300 lens, you know, but I just love this Papio too, because it allows you to look up close and personal at, uh, you know, bugs and flowers and uh, everything. Uh, it's just wonderful, wonderful, uh, my kind of binocular. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. 
Um, does anyone have any questions? I'll just give a few seconds in case they okay. want to unmute. Hello. Hi. Hi. Just wondering, uh, really enjoying this, by the way, but just wondering, um, what's the best way to spot owls at the flats? Good question. <laughs> well, um, there are several spots uh, that are good. The uh, best time to search for owls is in winter, when it gets cold. And then uh, we have a better chance of having the little northern pygmy owl come down and also the northern solid owl come down. They're tiny little owls the size of pop pans. But also the great horned owl will be out because it's feeding its young and so it's out hunting and you'll find them in the trees around here. There are two trees in particular that you can find them. And as I mentioned, the dragonfly pond uh, the far end, there's an evergreen tree, and in there you can, usually in the middle, find the great horned owl hanging down there. Um, I'd have a map I'd show you, but anyways, that's a general area. And then the West Pond on the eastern side, uh, if you walk down the Suris Road, which is the main road that goes down the middle of Mayport Flats, there's a big evergreen just off to the right, and um, about a quarter of the way up, usually sitting on a branch there, and that you can usually find the the uh, great horned owl in there too. Amazing. Now the pygmy owl and uh, and uh, solid owl usually just are sitting on any other branch that they find. You know, usually to rest during the day because they're they're not hunting during the day; they're night hunters. So you can find them if you're lucky, but you need snow on those days. So come down when there's snow and hopefully if you're lucky, you might find one. Um, other than Maplewood Flats, um, all, you know, during the summer and spring, uh, if you head up to um, Cypress Bowl Road and go to where the uh, turnoff is to the, um, the uh, toboggan areas uh, and where the, um, it's called the, uh, I guess the, uh, anyways, there's a hospital, not a hospital there, but there's some buildings there. Uh, I've seen Northern pygmy owls hanging around there. Very cool. Uh, someone also asked on Facebook, um, does it, uh, or how often do you see owls during the day? Pretty frequent uh, if it's cold. Nice. Bye, Carlene. Bye, Carlene. And guys, I think I will, and we have time for one last question, but then we'll, we'll wrap it up. I want sure. um, just to give any space in case anyone has a question. And if not, we'll totally just. Yeah, off. just ask the question, anyone? Okay, I think you might have Everyone on Facebook really appreciated this as well. There've been a number of questions and Oh, it looks Thanks, like Leanne. people in the chat too are saying thank you. And everyone, we appreciate um, your support. Yay, thank you, Janice, for the claps. I love that. Um, right. <laughs> um, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you for attending. Thank you for the technical difficulties that was on my end. My apologies, but <laughs> uh, thank you for your patience and understanding on that and for joining us. Uh, this is our first time kind of trying out a virtual walk. We've, we've done other- Thanks, Chris, Spencer. Thanks, Chris. And thank you to Rob so much for your time and your knowledge. Um, Thanks, Nicole. It was yeah. really fun getting together and doing this. It was. And going on that walk yesterday was a really good way to learn more. Oh, yeah. And I think- Yeah, the uh, loon, the common loon we saw. Eh? <laughs> we saw a common loon. <laughs> we saw a lot of stuff um, and it was really fun. So thank you to Rob. Thank you to- Thanks, Leanne. Janice. And thank you to everyone. Thanks, here. Robin. Thanks, Lois. <laughs> and I will um I will put all the links, um, the photos, um, any events coming Thanks, up Heidi. um in an email going out later today. Okay, everyone with the video to this so you can rewatch it if you have any questions. Thanks, Monica. Thank Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Bye. Thanks. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Janice. Bye. Bye.